Pat Love here from Love Healing Hearts, here to share a few verses with you. Psalms 91, followed by Pat's two cents. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. You think about that now. I'm stopping. Now it's Pat's two cents. Listen, what I want to tell you is whatever's going on, God is a God of purpose for each and every one of our lives. Do you hear me? And when it looks like life is happening as a happenstance from one trauma to another episode to another uh, crisis to another trial. Trust me, there is total order in what God is allowing in your life. So the best way to handle it, in my opinion, and from my experience and from reading the word, is to ask God, talk to God. Don't just jump up and start putting out fires. Don't even jump up and try to defend yourself. Let God do that. He'll do a much better job than you will. So when God is handling something, sometimes all you can do is mark time. And the the space between the, the initial beginning of God implementing his plan and the implementation, the fruition of his plan, finally being complete and visible to you. Yeah. That's the hardest part. The the, the two ends between that, the, the, those two ends, right between here and there. That is the hardest time to wait. It could be a few weeks, a few months, a few years, a few decades sometimes. But I am here to tell you, God's timing is always perfect. You know how the old folks would say, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. You know, those phrases come for a reason. People experience things that they don't like, very unpleasant things. And they find God showing up right, right, when it makes all the difference. And he shows up big time. Do you hear what I'm saying? When you are going through stuff, when the Bible says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. How can I say, when you are dwelling somewhere, when you are located in a particular area, and let's say you are a child, and both your parents are around, and they're good parents, and they take very good care of you. Well, there are times, whether it's a big brother, a big sister, a parent, or even a neighbor or a friend who's got your back, there are times when, because you hang with them, because you have, you're in relationship with them, that's the dwelleth in the secret place, because you're in relationship and an intimate one, a deep one, you know, not just a little shallow, you know, fly by night, uh, uh, a fair weather friend. I'm talking about one who's there through thick and thin, even through your mess, they're still there. Okay. What happens is when you start falling or things start crumbling around you, 
Those people are either reaching in their pockets to help you out. They're all of a sudden changing their schedule to give you rides. They are doing everything in their power to help you through this crisis. And it is definitely an inconvenience for them. It's costing them one way or another. Well, I'm saying that to tell you that if you can depend on them, baby, God is way more dependable. He's not fickle. He's not superficial. He's not here today, gone tomorrow. He's not a man that he would lie. He's not, he doesn't play games like psych. He's not that kind of a, 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 of a creator. So when I say that you can depend on him more than anyone else that you think has your back through thick and thin, when he says, you shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, a shadow cools you when you're hot. A shadow covers you. When he says under, that means that you're under him. He's your covering. He's your shelter. He's your refuge. That's why the next verse says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. So he is your divine protection, your divine uh, guard, your your shelter, your your your. Uh, Fort. I mean, he is everything that you need to protect you. And it sounds a little super, uh, it sounds a little exaggerated because most people are like, well, God isn't here. And I just saw a dog come running after me and God, you know, where was God when the dog bit me? Well, some things we have to work with God because God has already given us authority. So let me ex express one experience. I was walking down the street. I'm going to give you two. I was walking down the street at nighttime. This story is in my second book, An Epic Journey into the Supernatural. I was walking down the street, and I heard a voice tell me, cross over to the other side. I'm not telling all the details because you have to read all that. I knew it was God. I mean, there was no ifs, ands, or buts. I knew it. When he says his children hear his voice, oh, yeah, we hear it. But I'm thinking there's some guys over there, and I don't know if that's safe. Cross over to the other side. It's nine something at night. It is dark. And I've never seen those two guys on my block before. I don't know if they're fixing their car or if they're ripping it off. I don't know what's... <gasps> Cross over to the other side! Now, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm going, I'm going. Well, I didn't know. I had no idea. All I saw was the street ahead of me and the people on my right. So I was on my left trying to give them a wide berth. But God knew more than I did. Because had I not obeyed him and stayed and leaned to my own understanding, my behind would have been eaten up, bitten, minced meat, chewed up, spit out, scratched up, mauled, clawed, everything. But because I listened to him and obeyed him, finally, I looked to my left. And I mean, this dog was, I mean, he has this head and he has this fur. It's thick fur. He almost looks like a lion. And he's almost like a bear. I mean, it, it was the weirdest looking dog. He was, he was blending into the night. And I was not aware he was off his chain, out of the house, and in his front yard guarding his territory. And I was just about to step in and step all the way in it. So God protected me from getting hurt by this dog, by a warning. Now, when I say God has your back, baby, he's got every side of you. 
Okay, here's another one. I was walking down the street in the daytime going to the bus stop. And it was mating season. And all of a sudden, and I had been attacked twice in my life, but I was not saved. And yes, I got scratched, bitten, mauled, everything. And uh, yeah, that was, those were horrible experiences. Very scary when a pack of dogs come after you and jump on you like that. That's scary. But this time, these, these years later, Instead of me cussing, screaming, swinging, kicking, and hitting them with my big old purse, what I did was I had no other weapon but one name, and I hollered, I bind you. Oh, I was screaming because I was scared. But in the past, volume and screaming doesn't stop dogs, I'll tell you that. But I hollered, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I mean, it's like, I bind you. I was way up there. In the name of Jesus, I bind you. In the name of Jesus. It was like all of a sudden, those dogs were like, oh, 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 what was I getting ready to do? Oh, oh, okay, I guess I'll turn around and go back where I came from. I mean, they almost looked like they were no longer aware that I was even still in their midst. And I walked to the bus stop, totally unscathed. And it's, it's, when I looked behind me, the dogs were almost all gone, gone in their own little separate directions. They want from all, all directions, front, back, side, everywhere. But when they went away, they went the same way, but they meandered away like they were really confused, like an Alzheimer's attack. It was really bizarre to watch. But that's when I found out the name of Jesus has more power than I realized. I knew it had power over demons because I fought them. But I had never handled a living creature in my life. So even against nature, God is the creator. Everything, everything has to submit to his lordship. Even the demons in hell and the devil has to submit to his lordship, but because God equipped us through Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power from on high, we have authority when we're in Jesus to use the name of Jesus against dangerous situations and we don't get hurt. In, in areas where other people would definitely be hurt, damaged, maimed sometimes for life or even killed, we don't get hurt because we are abiding under the shadow, the covering of the Almighty. You hear me? Okay. Now, I have finished that particular segment. And now I am going to talk to you about something that God and I are working together on. And that's why I look so cross-eyed right now because Mamacita is very tired. I have been up over 24 hours. And if you're wondering, what, why? Well, it's because I'm going to let you in on a little secret. And I want you to pray for me. Really, pray for me. Because I'm going to start a worldwide church officially. YouTube was the precursor, and I will continue with YouTube because YouTube will be my venue for making the videos, and YouTube will still be up and running. I'm gonna, I intend to make videos on YouTube all through the week like I normally do, but on the weekend or whatever day I choose to upload them on the weekend, that's going to be strictly, oh, I've been working, excuse me, you guys, that's really going to be um, oh, lost my train of thought. Help me, Lord. <laughs> that is really going to be um, an effort I have to put forth to get this going so that this and YouTube work together. They're going to correlate together. It's not going to be giving up one to do the other. There's going to be even more YouTube because of the other. So um, I ask you to pray for me. 
And the other thing I'm going to do is I'll be asking some of you to give me your phone numbers or if you want to volunteer, if you've had supernatural experiences with God. Look, you guys, I need your help getting these testimonies out to this world. Some people who won't go to God, who won't go to Jesus because he died on the cross for our sins and he rose from the dead, will go to him if they find out he did a miracle in your life. You know how people are. So we need to pull out all stops and whatever we have in our arsenal. If you have a supernatural experience with God, supernaturally delivered or healed your child, or you have a supernatural experience where, you know, God just supernaturally restored your job, your family, your wife, your kids, and just totally restored your reputation. We need that too. If some of you, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saying the sky is the limit with the experiences with God. And I'm asking you guys to pray and ask God and start sending me messages letting me know what type of a thing. If you're willing to talk with me over the phone, I will talk with you just like I'm doing now on the telephone, and they will hear your voice talking back to me. The world will hear it, you guys. So I have been up 24 hours almost, <laughs> yeah, a lot, a couple of days I've been up 24 hours uh, and then slept all day in between. But I've been working on a website for five days. And the website is called, uh, now we got two names going here, right? That's because I'm branding. The website is called by my branding name. And that is God's into love. That's G O D S I N, the number two L O V E. God's into love. And then underneath that, it'll say God's sense plus Pat's two cents. The very next page, because they just go back and forth, they alternate with another beautiful scenery. We'll have the name of the online church and the name of our church will be God's remnant global online church. So basically that is my announcement and I'm really asking for your prayers. I will be putting up some videos tomorrow and probably Tuesday. But I have just been really trying to get as much done. I don't know how long this is going to take because Mama Sita has no idea what she's doing. I do a little bit. I go back on YouTube. How do I do that? I watch four or five or six videos. Oh, okay. I understand it now. I get back on the computer and I do a little bit of that. And then I go back and some of it I figure out as I go. And then I'm picky so I'm trying to make sure the design and the layout is really, really impacting, crystal clear, and not full of clutter and nonsense. Yeah, so it's a lot of work, and uh, I ask you to really, really pray for me. I'm getting ready to go to bed now. I will probably not be up for another eight or ten hours, because when I'm up 24 hours, I sleep like a corpse. Yeah. So I will be going to bed and I will get up, do some more work on the, on the website. If you guys want to look at the website, I will put a link at the bottom in the description box. And um, I don't no, I don't think it'll work in the window. I'll try it, but you know, sometimes they don't make that, make it easy to make links. But um, the, it, the name of it is, I, I have to tell, it's all lowercase because it's a, it's a URL. So G-O-D-S-I-N-2 L-O-V-E dot org. God's into love dot org. The name of the website 
is God's into love. The name of the church is God's remnant global online church. God bless you and thank you for praying for me because I am very ignorant when it comes to this technical stuff. I, the Lord gave me an eye for design, but technicality, whew, more than a notion for me. So pray for me that I get this done before the end of March because I would love to launch the church at the beginning of April or the end of March. But I will let you know in advance. God bless you.